News of the Times. The story of the man who escaped death seven times in 1551. For the murder by Alice Arden of her husband, Thomas Arden. Execution 14th of February 1551 by burning at the stake. Love triangles are as old as time. We have chosen this story due to its renown in the day, probably due to its lurid detail and the several failed attempts she made to murder her husband. This story is described in great length in both the Newgate Calendar and the Chambers Book of Days. Background Alice Arden, nee Brigantine, was born in 1516 to prosperous parents. She was described as comely both in body and appearance. She married Thomas Arden at an unrecorded date. They made their home in Faversham Abbey. There is a record of their having one daughter, Margaret, in 1538. The marriage was an unhappy one. Alice began an affair with the local tailor, Richard Mosby. It would seem that the affair was an open secret which Thomas was aware of, but could do little about, given the powerful position of his in-laws. Alice begins to detest Thomas, her husband, and makes several attempts to kill him. Due to the failures, she then brings in her lover and his mates to see if they can have more success than she did. The case was so well known, the story became a play, Arden of Faversham in 1592. The potential author of the play, no less than William Shakespeare. The dialect of this time can be difficult. We have revised in areas where there is a lack of clarity. From the Newgate Calendar, Alice Arden of Feversham, executed with her lover Mosby and others in the year 1551 for the murder of her husband. Thomas Arden was but a private gentleman living at Feversham in the county of Kent, yet the circumstance of his murder, the detection of it, and the punishment of the offenders were so exceedingly remarkable that they may well be inserted in this place. He was a tall and comely person and married a gentlewoman who was young, well-shaped, and in every other way handsome, having unhappily contracted an unlawful familiarity with one Mosby, a black, swarthy fellow, servant to Lord North. Mosby lay often in Arden's house, and in a short time the intercourse between Alice and Mosby was so open that Mr. Arden could not but perceive it, although common report says that he winked at it for fear of dislodging her relations, with whom he had some great expectations. Having continued in their lewd practices for a considerable time, the woman Alice doted more and more upon Mosby and began to loathe her husband extremely insomuch that she would have been glad to have found out a way to get rid of him. Murder Attempt 1. The Poisoning of Thomas Arden There was a painter at Feversham who was reported to be versed in the art of poisoning. To him she applied herself and asked him whether he had any skill in poisoning or not. The man seemed to own it. Alice told him she would have such a dose prepared as would make a quick dispatch. That I can do, said he. So he presently went to work and gave it to her with directions to put it into the bottom of a porringer and so to pour milk upon it 
but forgetting the direction, put in the milk first, and then the poison. Now, her husband designing that day to take his horse and ride it to Canterbury, his wife brought him his breakfast, which was usually milk and butter, and having taken a spoonful or two of the milk, and liking neither the taste nor colour of it, he said, Mrs. Alice, what sort of milk is it you gave me? Upon which... She threw down the dish and said, I find nothing can please you, upon which he went away to Canterbury, and by the way, vomited extremely, so that he escaped for that time. Alice became afterwards acquainted with one Green of Feversham, a servant of Sir Anthony Agers. Alice, knowing that Green hated her husband due to a property dispute, began to concert with him how to make way with Arden. The agreement at last was thus, that if they could procure anyone to murder her husband, he should have ten pounds for his wicked pains. The Conspirators Green and his brother Bradshaw met Black Will. Black Will had been a soldier and was known to have committed several robberies and horrid murders in and around Boulogne in France. Green entered into discourse with Black Will, and said, When you have supped, come to my quarters at such a sign, and I will give you some sack and sugar. By my blood, said he, I thank ye. Thither he went, according to his promise, and was well treated. Then Green and he went and talked together. Aside from Bradshaw, with Green proposing to give the Black Will ten pounds to kill Mr. Arden. Black Will answered with a great oath. He would, if he could, but not know him. I'll show you him to you tomorrow in St. Paul's, said Green, when they had done talking. Green bade Black Will to go home to his quarters, and then, sitting down, he wrote a letter to Alice Arden, wherein, amongst others, he made use of these expressions. We have got a man for our purpose. We may thank my brother Bradshaw for it. For our listeners, this letter written to Alice Arden would eventually convict him and his brother. Bradshaw, knowing nothing of the matter, took the letter and went the next morning and delivered it to Alice Arden, while Green and Black Will bent their course to London. Green, at the time appointed, showed Black Will Mr. Arden walking in St. Paul's, upon which Black Will asked him, Who is he that follow him? Michael, said Green, one of his men. By my blood, quoth Will, I'll kill them both. Nay, said Green, do not do that, for he is in the secret. By my blood, I care not for that. I will kill them both, replied he. Murder Plot 2. Killing Thomas Arden in St. Paul's Churchyard Black Will proposed to murder Mr. Arden in St. Paul's Churchyard, but there were so many gentlemen with him that he could not effect it. Murder Plot 3. Killing Thomas Arden in his lodgings. In short, Thomas Arden had taken lodgings in London for his business there. The plan is for Michael the manservant to leave everything unlocked so that Black Will can get in and kill Thomas Arden. Michael becomes afraid that he will be killed too and changes his mind about leaving the doors unlocked. Thomas Arden escapes this plot. Murder plot for waylaying Thomas Arden on the road. In short, Thomas Arden is now travelling back home from London. The plan is that Black Will will ambush him along the way and kill him on the road. Michael again is worried that he too will be killed. He makes his horse go lame so that Thomas Arden will be riding on his own 
as his horse is looked at in the next town. The Newgate calendar continues so that his master rode on. But before he came to the place where Black Will lay in wait for him, he was overtaken by several gentlemen of his acquaintance, so that the assassin failed here to accomplish his bloody design. Murder Plot 5 Waylaying Thomas Arden on the Road Black Will are now staying at a friend of Green's storehouse, waiting for the moment to kill Thomas Arden. Alice Arden brings him food during the wait several times. The attention is again to waylay Thomas Arden along his way and kill him on the road. Black Will becomes lost and waits for Thomas Arden in the wrong place. Thomas Arden escapes again. Murder Plot 6 Waylaying Thomas Arden on the Road Rather complicated, but it would seem that once again Thomas Arden was out riding and was to be waylaid by Black Will, but Black Will missed his chance. From the Newgate calendar, Murder Plot 7 Picking a Fight Openly with Thomas Arden St. Valentine's Day being near, the villainous crew thought it a proper time to perpetrate their wicked devices. Mosby intended to pick some quarrel or other with Arden at the fair and so fight with him, saying he could not find it in his heart to murder a gentleman in such a manner as his wife would have it. Though Mosby and Alice had made mutual promises to each other to be altogether as man and wife, and had therefore upon received the sacrament at London openly together. But this project of quarrelling with Mr. Arden would not do, for though he had been often before and was then also highly provoked by Mosby, Thomas Arden would not fight. Murder Plot 8. The Valentine Day's Killing the Newgate calendar describes in detail how Mosby initially feels that this type of a murder is base. He leaves in a fury, but is convinced to go along with the plan due to the sobbing and begging of Alice. The Newgate calendar continues. The importunity of this wicked woman at length prevailing, he was brought to a com compliance with the accursed project, and thereupon Black Will was conveyed into Mr. Arden's house and hid it in a closet at the end of the parlour, before which they had sent all the servants out upon some pretext or other, except those who were privy and consenting to the villainous design. Mosby went and stood at the door in a silk nightgown tied about him, between the hours of six and seven at night. Soon after which, Arden, who had been at a neighbour's house called Dunding, and had cleared some accounts that were between them, went home, and finding Mosby at the door, asked him if it was not supper time. I think not, said he. I believe it is not ready yet. Then, quoth Mr. Arden, let us in the meantime go and play a game at tables, and so going directly into the parlour, through the hall, where his wife was walking, Mr. Arden said to her, How now, Mrs. Alice? But she made him little or no answer. In the meantime, the wicket door of the entry was chained by somebody, and when they had got into the parlour, Mosby sat down on the bench, facing the closet, wherein Black Will was hid. Michael Arden's man stood behind his master with a candle in his hand to shadow Black Will, and that his master might by no means perceive him to come out of the closet. In their play, Mosby said, and that was the signal for Black Will to come out, Now, sir, 
I can take you if I please. Take me, said Arden. Which way? With that, Black Will rushed out of the closet and threw a towel about his neck to stop his breath and strangle him. Then, Mosby, having a pressing iron weighing fourteen pounds at his girdle, struck him so on the head with it that he knocked him down, upon which he gave a loud groan, which made them believe he was dead. From the parlour they carried him into the counting-house, where, as they were about to lay him down, the pangs of death came upon him, and groaning in a most grievous manner, he extended himself, and Black Will, giving him a terrible gash in the face, slew him outright. Then he laid him along, took his money out of his pocket and the rings off his fingers, and coming out of the counting-house said, The business is over, give me my money, upon which Mrs. Arden gave him ten pounds, and then he went to Green's, borrowed a horse of him, and rode away. Clearing up the crime. After Black Will was gone, Mrs. Arden went into the counting house and with a knife struck the corpse seven or eight times in the breast. Then they cleaned the parlour, wiped away the blood with a cloth, and strewth the rushes which had been disordered amongst the struggle. The cloth and the bloody knife wherewith she had wo wounded her husband they threw into a tub by the well's side, where they were afterwards both found. This done, she sent for two Londoners, then at Faversham, to come to supper, to which they had been invited before the horrid murder was committed. They were grocers by trade, and their names were Prune and Cole, and when they came, she said, I wonder where Mr. Arden is. He will not stay long. Come, let us sit down. He will be quickly with us. Then Moby's sister was sent for and sat down with them, and they were all very merry. When supper was over, Mrs. Arden made her daughter play on the virginals, and they danced, and amongst them frequently saying, I wonder where Mr. Arden stays so long. Come, let us sit down. He will surely soon be with us. Let us play a game at tables. But the Londoners said they must go to their lodgings, or else they should be locked out, and so took their leave of the company and departed. As soon as they were gone, the servants, who were not privy to the murder, were sent into the towns, some to look for their master, and others upon other errands. Then Michael, a maid, Mosby's sister, and one of Alice Arden's own daughters took the dead body and carried it out into a field adjoining to the churchyard and to his own garden wall, through which he went to church. In the meantime it began to snow, and when they came to the garden door, they had forgot the key, so that one of them was sent to fetch it. It was brought at last, and the door being unlocked, they conveyed the corpse into the field, about ten paces from the door of that garden, and laid it down on its back, in its nightgown and slippers, between one of which and the foot struck a long rush or two. Having by this management effectually secured themselves, they returned the same way into the house. The doors were opened, and the servants who had been sent into town being come home, it was by this time grown very late. However, the wicked woman sent her people out again in search of their master, directing them to go to such places where he most frequented, but they could hear no manner of tidings of him. Then she began to exclaim and wept like a crocodile, this brought some of her neighbours in, who found her very sorrowful and lamenting her case, that she could not find out what was become of her husband. After they had searched other places up and down, 
they came at length to the ground where the dead body was laid, where pruned the London grocer above mentioned, happening it to spy it first, called to the rest of the company who, who narrowly viewing the same, found it to be the corpse of Arden, and how it was wounded. They found the rushes sticking in his slippers, and found some footsteps of people in the snow between the place where he lay and the garden door. This causing suspicion, the mayor ordered everybody to stand still, and then appointed some of the company to go about to the other side of the house and get in that way, and so through the garden towards the place where finding the prints of people's feet all along before them in the snow, it appeared very plain that he was conveyed that way through the garden into the place where they had laid him. The mayor and the company hereupon went into the house, and being no strangers to the ill conduct of Mrs. Arden, they were very strictly examining her about her husband's murder. She defied them and said, I would have you to know I am no such woman. But they, having found some of his hair and blood near the house in the way he was carried out, as also the blood knife she had thrust into his body and the cloth wherewith the murderers had wiped off the blood spilt in the parlour. These things were so urged home that she confessed the murder, and upon beholding her husband's blood cried out, Oh, the blood of God help me, for this blood have I shed. She then uncovered her guilty associates, Alice Arden, her daughter, Michael, Mr. Arden's manservant, and the maid, were seized and sent to prison. Then the mayor and the rest that attended him went to the Flower de Luce, where they found Mosby in bed. They soon discovered some of the murdered person's blood upon his stockings and purse, and when he asked them what they meant by coming in that manner, they said, You may easily see the reason, and showing him the blood on his purse and hose, these are our evidence. He thereupon confessed the horrid fact and was committed to prison, as well as all the rest of the bloody crew, except Green, Black Will, and the painter, which last was never heard of after. Some time after, the assizes were held at Feversham, where all the prisoners were arranged and condemned. The real bloody criminals were executed in several places, for Michael, Mr. Arden's man, was hanged in chains at Feversham, and one of the maid servants was burned there, most bitterly lamenting her condition and loudly exclaiming against her mistress, who had brought her to that deplorable end for which she would never forgive her. Mosby and his sister were hanged in Smithfield at London. As for Mrs. Alice Arden, the founder of all the mischief, she was burnt at Canterbury. Green returned some years after, was apprehended, tried, condemned, and hanged in chains in the highway between Osbridge and Broughton, over against Feversham. But before his death, he proclaimed the innocence of Bradshaw, although it was then too late. Black Will was burned on a scaffold at Flushing in Zealand. That concludes this News of the Times episode. We really hope you enjoyed the show. If you did enjoy the show, please subscribe. Tell your friends. Subscribing really helps us. We are aiming for 1,000 subscribers. There's no cost to you, and it really helps to support us. Just tap on the subscribe button that pops up if you haven't already subscribed. We upload longer Regency or Victorian crime stories three times a week. 
with shorter Victorian stories on other days to give flavour of the times. For our podcast listeners, you can see this podcast with the associated pictures on our YouTube channel, at News of the Times. You can find the link in the show notes. Thank you again for watching and listening. This has been News of the Times, and I'm Robin Coles.